So today is the 13th of the 12th, 2019 and um, further from the upload I put on last night about medical negligence and the medical ailments that I'm experiencing, um, I want to discuss in this upload the intrusion of mental health uh, uh, services. Um, as I've said, in 2017 and only since being married, I was um, unlawfully detained. I've also established um, on two occasions, three occasions, that there was basically the intrusion of mental health services without I being a patient, without there being a mental health issue, and um, also the consequence of those uh, unlawful detainments and those violations of my freedom involved um, misdiagnoses and false information being presented about me. Um, I'd say since 2015, I've sat with a psychiatrist for a maximum of 30 minutes, and that was while I was unlawfully detained. Um, from that 30 minute conversation during an unlawful detainment without there any, being any reason for being in the psychiatric ward, um, the most elaborate uh, report was convoluted. Um, the facts and information were incorrect, inaccurate and false. Um, the diagnosis was completely fabricated. The medication that was prescribed to me harmed my body and organs. Um, so this is what has happened since I've been married. Um, as a deserted wife, unsupported, not safeguarded at all in my situation where I'm being victimised and violated, um, my legal rights to um, what I would require have been withheld and obstructed. Um, so this is what this human rights violation assault is like. Um, I'm currently in HAPS accommodation, as I've stated, and very grateful for it. But um, to be unemployed um, and to be, you know, unsupported and just to be receiving my unemployment allowance when I'm suffering from physical ailments um, is just a very sad sign of the times. And, you know, the thing about it is, if um, I'm to really be questioning and querying anything, I'm wondering what the role of the authorities is in all of this. Because, um, as I've said very clearly, there's been a lot of unsubstantiated calls and claims and false allegations and defamatory statements um, relayed and portrayed that um, are all a part of this assault of human rights and hate crime vendetta. So, do you know, I'm just wondering what role the authorities are playing in all of this because they're aware of the circumstances in Tully County Kerry. Um, the Rape Crisis Centre always says nothing about me without me um, and yet I've experienced very serious breaches of confidentiality. I've also experienced very serious uh, violations of privacy and as well as that, um, the individuals, um, anonymous, strangers to me as far as I'm concerned, you know, um, have involved themselves and have perpetrated the most treacherous assault against an innocent woman, unjustifiably. And you, I was just listening to the radio um, about a matter um, and the cause for the matter that was discussed was greed. And greed is a dangerous, a very dangerous, uh, uh, what would you say, defect of character. So um, I don't know if that's the aspect of cause for this vendetta, but I know that what's happening is unjustifiable. And the women in particular that I am aware of, that I know have been causing this problem since I gave birth and got married, have um, completely disrespected the role of feminism. They've completely disrespected the role of human rights. And they've completely disrespected um, the institution of marriage and family and the role of family in society. Um, to be targeting a woman um, with the most you know, unjustifiable causes and reasons is, is, is ridiculous. 
Um, and this has been happening since not only 2015, but more so since 2017. Um, I've made it very clear how I've been violated and victimised. And I'm just very curious as to know what the authorities are doing when people are intruding in my private life, affecting my livelihood, health, career, etc. And um, also my personal faith and spiritual life. Um, as a light worker, as I've said, my light body has been destroyed by this community. And um, as a victim, I have not been protected in the community. So I'm just wondering what authorities would have to say about that. And I'm also wondering, with the uh, issue of spiritual um, violations that have been perpetrated, what um, do the politicians and people think about this kind of a situation? Because um, spirituality is pretty personal and pretty private and pretty serious for other people to be interfering in. And as regards physical health, that's also pretty serious for people to be affecting. And um, as regards mental health, I'm wondering what is the condition and standard of the mental health of those people that are causing this problem in this town. Um, as regards the issue of information that has been withheld from me, um, I've not been consulted, as I've stated and reiterated over and over. Um, I have been violated systematically. I've been defamed. And I have not once been consulted about the validity of the things that have been said and done. Um, so with regard to my legal rights and entitlements and my issues with regard to uh, desertion and betrayal and cheating and whatnot, um, I'm just wondering what do the women of Ireland have to say about this kind of a circumstance? And I'm just wondering if it was anybody else's wife, daughter or you know mother I'm wondering what would they be thinking about this kind of a situation because um, the female body and femininity and female spirituality etc you know it's all pretty precious we're all precious but um, the violations involved in the spiritual light body theft that I've experienced that have violated my bodily integrity are you know very serious matters of concern that there was no authorization for anyone to interfere with um, but this is what I've experienced and I'm just wondering what are the mental health services thinking about people that are doing this kind of stuff and um, you know but the politicians in particular you know for a qualified professional woman a mother and a deserted wife that's been obstructed legally from attaining my rights based on other people's issues and falsehoods I might add as well because there's been a lot of false claims unsubstantiated claims etc so I'm just wondering what's the logical perception of this situation um, are people realizing how serious this is are people realizing how damaging this is um, the freedom of information every citizen is entitled to um, but as I've said um, information has been withheld from me so um, this is the matter at lunch on the 13th of the 12th, 2019, when um, hate crime is being perpetrated in Tralee against an innocent woman. So what's the role of the authorities and politicians and what's their stance trying to confront such serious wrongdoings?